All right, let's do a nutrition check-in. So I've been intuitive eating, not needing to weigh myself, just naturally being able to read what my body needs for a while now. Time to put the dietitian hat back on. Let's look at how I've naturally been eating, put it into an app called Lose It, which helps you track to see what your nutrition balance has been. I'm so curious intuitively where I am. Breakfast, okay, about 600, 700 calories. I have coffee with some milk. I add turmeric and clove. I have some cereal. I have a pretty good amount of cereal because I work out first thing in the morning. Almonds, some more milk, and blueberries. This is just an example of something I'd most often have for breakfast. And the breakdown for breakfast is 17% protein, 21% fat, and really high in carbohydrates, 62%. So intuitively, my body just knew a lot of carbs are needed when you're being active. How about lunch? About 500 calories. So if I'm not doing hummus, sometimes I'll do some deli meat, like chicken or tuna, but I just use hummus for an example. Almonds, for some reason, I really love almonds. It must be the magnesium. A little drizzle of olive oil, some Parmesan cheese on top. I love my vegetables at lunch and dinner. So I have a cup of arugula, almost a cup of cauliflower. I have some crackers on the side. I love kind of grainy textured. And my lunch ends up being about 40% carbs, so I'm not as active around lunchtime, 16% protein, and 44% fat. So naturally my body's wanting a little more fat at my lunch. Ooh, look at all that fiber. And dinner, okay, about 600 calories. I love my vegetables. I have broccoli with olive oil, onion, garlic, Pasta, oh, my go-to for dinner. And I love the creamy white sauce. And David's usually cooking. There's a lot of butter and olive oil because my body does well with more of a fat-based diet. I have some white wine. There's some more vegetables like bell pepper, and there's usually a protein. If it's not sausage, it might be shrimp. But my dinner tends to be about 15% protein, about 50% carb, and 40% fat. So again, you slow down towards the end of the night, which makes sense, a little more fat. If I work out in the evening, I may be craving more carbohydrate. So overall, it looks like I'm about 15% protein, 40% carbohydrate, and 50%, wait, is that carb? No, that's fat, right? Oh, okay, 50% carbohydrate and 40% fat. I know I do like my healthy fats, but overall my macronutrients, meaning protein, carbs, and fat, I'm lighter on the protein side. I'm a little bit heavier on the carb, about 50%, and I have moderate amount of fat in my diet. That's what I intuitively have learned over the years. Works really well for me. It keeps me energized and full. So coffee, I was curious. The benefits of coffee, obviously caffeine is consumed all around the world, but the research actually shows that coffee contains vitamin B2, which nourishes your thyroid, and whole grains that I have, the cereals at breakfast, actually have a lot of evidence that shows it can help with lowering heart disease, it gives you a good amount of fiber, and they're fortified a lot with magnesium, along with the almonds, blueberries, really high in antioxidants. It's fun to look at the food you crave and work well for you and then just see what vitamins and minerals they have. The body needs that beautiful blend of nutrition. Broccoli, oh my gosh, I love broccoli. It's high in calcium, potassium, which affects how your heart beats. And also the soliforaphane and broccoli has some anti-cancer benefits. It can also help with mental health. It has something called carcinoids. 
Now moving on to cauliflower. Oh, I love cauliflower. But did you know that cauliflower is really high in fiber? Three grams. And when you have more fiber, it helps balance your insulin and your blood sugars, which can help prevent you from developing diabetes. Whole grains and high fiber fruits and vegetables are just really great for managing your blood sugar, which manages your appetite and also can lower your cholesterol. So when you have fiber in your diet, it attaches to your cholesterol and then your body can secrete it from your body, which helps prevent things like high cholesterol and heart disease. Then I was curious about the benefits of cheese in my diet. Very high in protein, vitamin B12, which helps prevent anemia, meaning you can breathe easier, you have a good coloration to your face, and you have more energy to exercise. According to Harvard, the nutrition source, some people overdo the protein. If you take your weight and divide it by 2.2, that gives you kilograms. You really only need about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you exercise, maybe 1.2 grams per kilogram. Because I love pasta so much, it just seems to do well on my body, I wanted to see what are the benefits of pasta. So it's good to eat intuitively, and then after doing it for a bit, reflect on what the nutrition is in that food and where you're at more on an analytical level. Pasta is known to be low on the GI scale, the glycemic index, meaning how fast blood sugar is released into your body. If you eat lower GI foods, it helps keep your appetite more stable. So you're not as hangry. You don't need to eat a whole bunch after dinner because your blood sugar has been more managed. It's also versatile, so you can switch things up like the nut, the vegetable, the sauce color. It's really affordable as well. And it has gotten a bad rep because it's high in carbs, but again, it's well balanced. I am truly a butter girl. I don't know if it's my Irish, my European descent, but there's a lot of benefits of including butter with a variety of olive oils. So you get different chains of fatty acids. And I'm always cooking with onion and garlic. Well, I'm gonna correct myself. David is cooking mostly right now. But it does help with blood cells and the hydrogen sulfide has shown to help with vasodilation. What about that white glass of wine? Well, it does reduce stress in the body, but it's also heart healthy. So for women having about one glass in the evening and for men two glasses, there's a lot of benefits. This is the MyPlate method. I use this visual often when I'm coaching patients in the hospital. Imagine this is your lunch or dinner plate. We are cooking with a variety of fats, so you see the healthy oils on the left. But honestly, butter, olive oil, canola oil, just get variety. The largest portion of the plate should be your vegetables. Side salad, green beans, asparagus, broccoli. A fourth of the plate is the carb, rice, potato, pasta, just a medium portion. The other fourth of the plate is your proteins, steak, fish, pork, just get variety. And the smallest portion of the meal is the fruit or the sweet. There is dietary guidelines that are well studied and they say things like you need a certain amount of cups of vegetables and fruits per day and a certain amount of grains and a certain amount of dairy and if you're a woman you need more dairy. So I was just curious when I intuitively entered everything I ate for the day, how close I came to the recommendations. And they say based upon my height and weight, I need about two and a half cups of vegetables per day. Well, I was actually having a lot more of the dark leafy greens. And the fruits, I was right about where they recommended. The whole grains, I was right where they recommended. The meats, I was a little bit higher, which makes sense because I do lift weights and you need more protein if you're lifting weights. My calcium, it looks like I was above where they recommended. So if the RDA says 100%, I was at 220%. My iron, I was at 133% because I do get a variety. I don't eat vegetarian, not that that's wrong or right, but I do feel better with a little blend of protein sources. 
My vitamin C was just above the recommended daily allowance. My vitamin A, which helps with eyesight and seeing. And my fiber was, wow, really good, 42. Most people have a hard time getting 20 grams of fiber per day, but whole grains, dark breads, fresh fruit, vegetables. My potassium is a little bit lower, but I have an endocrine, endocrine disorder. Gosh, I wish I were perfect. No, I have an endocrine disorder, and my body is a little more vulnerable to potassium. So over the years of really getting intimate with my body, I've learned I need more sodium versus potassium, and that just works for me. So it was neat to actually see on the chart what I intuitively learned about myself and then how it represented on the graphs. My saturated fat is just a little bit above, and it's probably because I like my butter. I'm European. There's research to support that. That's another video. My polyunsaturated fat is even higher, so see, I'm not just getting too much saturated, I'm also getting the other polyunsaturated, so it's balancing the variety of the fatty acids. Monounsaturated fat consumed above the recommendation. So again, I do eat a heavier fat-based diet, but that works for my body. But I'm not getting any trans fat. I found this interesting. I thought for sure there's got to be at least a percent on the scale, but I guess, you know, not eating a lot of packaged processed items. I'm doing a lot of fresh things. I don't get any trans fat in my diet. And then my sugar is a little bit less than where it could be, so I thought, hmm, I might have a little more fun dessert before dinner if I'm hungry or after dinner, or, um, you know, if I need a little hold-me-over, or if I need to eat a little more fruits for more of a fiber-based sugar source, but it was helpful to kind of reflect. So overall, it's a really useful tool to track your intake. There's great apps like the Lose It app, and some people love to analyze. They're really good with numbers. It's helpful and empowers them. Other people, they just wanna do it for a little bit, maybe two weeks, just to bring awareness. Wow, I had no idea I was eating 2,500 calories a day. That makes sense that I'm not losing any weight. Or wow, I had no idea I was only eating you know, 1,200 calories a day, and my body really needs 1,800 to be meeting my base needs to support some natural lean out and feeling lighter and healthier on my body. So I just wanted to encourage you to take time. You know, sometimes we'll use a scale to check in and that's not wrong or right. Sometimes we'll track our calories and then sometimes we're just intuitive. You are the person in charge of what you think is best for your body. You can work with a professional if you're not quite sure because it can be overwhelming sometimes and they can give you some simple tips like let's start with tracking and then let's do more intuitive. Let's start with weighing yourself once a week and then let's not use the scale as a tool. But overall, it's a wonderful journey and competence is confidence. So don't be afraid to learn to use these tools. All right, guys, love you and I'll see you in the next video.